Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Greg Dolan with the uh, Massachusetts Clean Energy Center. Uh, I'm the terminal manager here for the New Bedford Marine Commerce Terminal. Um, uh, MassCEC at its heart is an economic development agency with a focus on the development of renewables industry within Massachusetts. Um, and that uh, takes on uh, a broad uh, variety of topics. Um, our sort of scope uh, extends from um, uh, from from workforce development to uh, uh, industry support for um, you know development of, of new technologies, um, as well as uh, residential and commercial um, uh, programs uh, to support uh, the uh, the adoption of, of um, uh, renewable energy uh, resources in in, in in the Commonwealth. Um, uh, a little bit later, my colleague Bruce Carlisle is going to talk a little bit more in detail about uh, some of our workforce initiatives, uh, as well as some of our, our uh, other um, uh, relevant initiatives. But uh, right now, I'm going to turn it over to uh, uh, Buddy Andrade from uh, um, Old Bedford Village, um, and uh, also the um, um, sorry the. Um, yeah. That feels uh, fine. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wear so, so many hats, and sometimes I gotta make sure everybody knows which hat I'm wearing. So, uh, my name is Buddy Andrade. I am the president of the Minority Action Committee and the director of the Access to, Oppo uh, Access to Opportunity Forum. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone, uh, for, for showing up to uh, have this discussion about offshore wind and where we're at in regards to uh, uh, workforce development and the uh, supply chain and things of that nature as it relates to um, uh, the uh, New Bedford area and the uh, uh, New Bedford uh, Commerce, Marine Commerce Terminal, where we are at today. And I want to say thank you uh, uh, to, to the Mayor uh, Mitchell and his office for, ju for just suggesting that we have this particular session here today. And I want to thank uh, Gregory and, and Bruce uh, for hosting us here today. Uh, uh, this is a very unique place and I, I know uh, in the years to come it's going to be a very bustling place. And so because of that we want the residents of New Bedford and the region, Southeastern Mass region, to know where this place is at and the importance of it for the economic future of this region. And so therefore we hope to do more activities here and be more involved in what's going on uh, uh, in, the, um, in the center here at the uh, terminal. Uh, access to Opportunity Forum. We started this back in uh, 2012. Uh, it's been very successful over the years. Uh, 2015, 16, we didn't do too much with it, and then 17, we got really back in, into it. Uh, after uh, attending several conferences around around um, New England, uh, uh, particularly in Portland, Maine, with the uh, uh, American Wind Energy uh, uh, Association, AWEA, and uh, also the uh, Business uh, Network. Um, of, uh, for offshore wind in, in New Jersey. Uh, we just saw so much going on, so much happening. And, and each and every time I attended one of these conferences, more and more was uh, being spelled out as to the, the amount of investments that were being made into this region. And at one time it was like $2 billion, then it was like $8 billion, then next thing we know we're talking about $16 billion, now we're talking up to $70 billion in potential investments over the next uh, 20 to 50 years in this region regarding renewable energy and, and clean energy in general. Um, that just kind of like began to blow my mind as to how big this thing is going to mushroom and how prepared are we for that and particularly how prepared we uh, meaning the city of New Bedford, the region, and particularly the uh, low income and minority communities. Uh, right across the street, about uh, three blocks from this site, is the uh, low income community, uh, what we call the South End area, South, uh, South Central, uh, one of the areas of high in poverty, uh, according to the census tracts, and it is also an opportunity zone. And because of that opportunity zone, we want to take strict advantage of that and be able to do more around business development, uh, workforce development, and investments in, into the community around infrastructure and things of that nature. Uh, the uh, this site here would be part of that economic opportunity zone besides being part of an economic zone uh, up and down the uh, the uh, waterfront. Now, uh, our, our agency has also worked diligently with the New Bedford Economic Development Council. Uh, Derek Santos, we just can't thank him enough for all of the work that he has done in uh, promoting uh, 
our office and what we're doing. And uh, because of his uh, uh, our involvement with the uh, Win Win Center there at the Economic Development Council, uh, we've been able to go to these conferences and, and and be part of that and represent the Economic Development Council at at the conferences. And uh, and I've been very very proud of that to be able to represent the city in that way and knowing that uh, the city knows I'm talking about all the people in the community, the whole region, and they know my heart is at the emphasis of uh, community, the low-income and minorities. So it all works out. The, what we did in 2018 after going to some of those conferences saying, well, this is not enough. So we need to do a, 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 an action plan. And so what I decided uh, uh, when we met back in uh, October of 2018, our board, was that we were going to make this an action time. We had to come out there, and ruffle some feathers, stir up the water, see what the heck's going on, bring people together, and then uh, hopefully clear up and have a, a, a path so that we can develop collaborations <laughs> and working with people throughout the region to make this thing happen. Because one thing I do know now, more than anything else, offshore wind is here. There's no ifs, ands, and buts. All the ups and downs, the New Bedford area has gone up with uh, talking about offshore wind with the Cape Wind project that we spent so much time with and trying to make that happen and then that went away. Uh, seeing what happened with deep water wind, putting the five tur turbines out there at Block Island. And I have to mention, uh, without no doubt, one of the most important people around offshore wind today uh, and started almost 10, 15 years ago was Matt Morrissey. Uh, the uh, former executive director of the uh, um, the Economic Development Council, he and uh, Gloria Williams, Louis Rodriguez, uh, and myself and others spent many many t months meeting in his office talking about this stuff. Uh, every two or three months we were having meetings talking about it, uh, and that went on for a couple of good years, two or three years actually. And uh, so we. We're embedded in this stuff. We've done our homework. We've done our due diligence. We've been been part of the meetings, been part of the brainstorming, and the arguments and everything else that goes along with trying to develop something and and, and, and make it happen. So, since January, we've held now four of these uh, of forums. Uh, the one that we held in February was very important. Uh, the mayor attended that one. He actually uh, chaired it uh, for us, and he actually, it was called uh, Blueprints and Strategies, a planning session. And basically what the mayor said was, we're all going to get on the same page. And with uh, Jim Oliveira from the uh, uh, Workforce Investment Board, uh, Ed Washburn from the Port Authority, uh, uh, James Daniels, other people that were in the room, including uh, Vineyard Wind, uh, trying to put everybody on the same table so that we can go forward. Nils was also there from Mass Clean Energy Center. So I think uh, the mayor's uh, uh, direction was, was, was taken seriously by everybody. We've been able to work closely, closer together since February, and that has uh, brought some really good opportunities in regards to just being able to be at the table, just being able to have those conversations and going forward so that the people in New Bedford, so that the residents who are listening to us here in the, in the community will say, well, what's in it for us? Is it really going to happen? Uh, oh, that's where we heard that before. Uh, when? How? and all that. So we're trying to answer those questions to the residents, and so we're going to be doing more and more of these as we go along. However, it's so important that they hear from all of us at the table, not just Buddy. Uh, they, the, most of the people say, well, we heard that from you, Buddy, already. What else is going on? Who else is doing it? Is it real? And not that they don't believe what we're talking about, but just that they want to know what really is going on, and the more folk that are talking about it, you put that information out there, is so important. Now, we are encouraging your residents who want to get into the workforce aspect of this to, to register at the Career Center. To get down to the Career Center, they have a, a serious uh, a set of programs down there to get you prepared where we need to, where we need to be, or to have you, uh, uh, if you want to get into the uh, workforce, where we need to have you be at. Access to Opportunity is trying to make it uh, of this information available to folks so they'll know where the, where the education opportunities are, where the intern opportunities are, the apprenticeship, the training, and then the jobs, but more importantly, the careers that are associated with offshore wind and renewable energy. So in order to do that, we've got to get you job ready. So our, our, our goal is to get you ready by having uh, you, you register with the Career Center, number one, find out what's out there uh, for, for training and things of that nature, and we have to, have to make sure that you have a high school diploma. 
that you have a driver's license, that you have a car, that you can pass a quarry, that you can pass a drug test. And I want to say that very clearly to the young people in the community. You've got to stop smoking the marijuana. This is a serious business. Employment is serious, period, no matter what uh, field you're working in. And the issue of marijuana is a very uh, uh, touchy area because people think it's legal and all that. Old Bedford Village, the Minority Action Committee, is a strict enforcer and believer of safety. And marijuana should not be tolerated on any project that we're involved in, and we will not support that in any fashion or form. So when residents come to us, we do our, our due diligence with them. We do an application with them. We want their resumes. And we're going to ask them all these questions. We want to know if you've got child support to pay, if you've got to do all of these things, uh, if you've got uh, issues with, with the courts or whatever. We'll help you deal with that and, and go forward. These are the most important elements of what we're talking about to get someone ready to get them into the pipeline. Once we've done all that, then we can get them into the career center, the career center do their thing. But there are also courses that, that folks can look into right now at the vocational high school. And welding is one of the most important ones that I want to point out. It's an eight-week course. Um, and it's not going to make you the best, but it's going to get you started. And then we're going to help you to get on-the-job training. We're going to help you get connected so, uh, to any of the contractors out here who are doing the welding, who may be looking for welders in the future, uh, and that's going to be very important. Uh, we're looking at internships uh, through Mass Clean Energy Center, and I understand we have two here today, and I want to make sure that uh, they're, they're recognized, and we congratulate you for your, um, uh, uh, for your internships, and that's very important. Now, I mentioned about the, uh, um, uh, uh, the issue of drugs and, and quarries. When the Bristol Community College did their uh, uh, forum and they brought on the uh, cable company, uh, JDR, and, and I was very impressed with the presentation by Bristol Community College and JDR. After the workshop, that particular phase was over, the gentleman from the uh, JDR came up to me because, of course, he's heard about me and uh, about the British are coming, the British are coming and all that. But he said something else that was very important and I, and I really, first I thought he was a wise guy, but, but he was cool. Uh, and he said, I heard, you, I heard you might have some guys with a problem. And you, my, 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 my issue was that we may have guys who may not be able to pass the quarry, guys who may have had some problems, but they may be on probation or whatever. So how do they get in? He said, don't you think for one minute that in England and in Germany that we didn't have these problems? So if you've got somebody that's looking for that second chance, and when he said that word, that was a word that, that really resonates with us here because there is a program called the Second Chance Program that President Trump has just been talking about on, the, on, the, on TV the other day. This Second Chance Program is crucial to giving these individuals who had made that one mistake, that second chance. And the, uh, the company manager that talked about that to me really Hit a, hit a bone with me and I really appreciated his, his candidacy because it made it clear that there is opportunity there, whether you've made that mistake or not. Now, of course, we got to vet the individual, do the right thing, and make sure that it happens so that, uh, that everybody's going to be comfortable that we have a, a productive work. And uh, so that, that, was, that was fantastic to hear. While at the conference, uh, the other individual that we brought there to, to speak, uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to visit, uh, they was able to go to the Mass Maritime uh, uh, um, table, and they got a nice education out of that. They were really impressed what they heard and saw, but they also were impressed with all the things in the room because there was so many, including the mini sub that was in there and all that. So it was very, very interesting for the two guys to get the experience they got. But Mass Maritime is also going to be doing some um, some training uh, as well, and so we're encouraging people to, to, to look into the Mass Maritime, what that's happening over there, and especially to understand that's going to be a major training center for this region, and we're happy to, to know about that, and, and uh, hopefully that that's going to really materialize and have a great deal for our region. Also, the Brighton Point is going to be a very important part of this development. Hopefully, our Congress people will stop thinking about giving more money for infrastructure for this region uh, so that Brayton Point can build out the way we need to have that built out, including New Bedford and other ports around the region. Uh, and, and so hopefully that besides the job training money that uh, the Congressman Keating is talking about, that he will also look at how we can bring more infrastructure funds to the area so that we can build up these areas that we're talking about. 
uh, at the conference, I met a company uh, called St. Pierre from Worcester. They had the originators of horseshoes. They make horseshoes. I, I love horseshoes. And they're also a, an American-made company and recognized by the President of the United States in Time Magazine. And they're also doing some work here in New Bedford already. And uh, they're, they've, they've asked, I've asked them to come to our next workshop, and they'll be here as well. And so that was pretty interesting uh, in meeting this company. Uh, because of the, all the gadgets and gadgets that, uh, that are associated with safety and all that, uh, this was, I thought was pretty interesting what they were doing. And then there's a big conversation that's going out, going out right now is about transmission. So this is a, a, a little pamphlet on transmission that people can read about how that's going to happen. And that's also, for me, it's important when when you go back to infrastructure and how to how to do all that, and so that's just a, 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 a overview of what we experienced this past uh, June 10th and 11th in Boston at the uh, um, offshore wind conference there. So trying to get all that stuff together and bringing it out to the community and letting the community know that these opportunities are there in that room at the conference. Just about everybody there was look, is looking for somebody. They're looking for contracts, some of this far, some of that far, some are just waiting another two or three months or nine, 90 days or whatever. This is what I was, because I asked everybody, oh, do you have a contract yet? Because we want to know who's ready so that we can find out what they're looking for, what they, their needs may, may be. And, uh, and it was a very interesting conversation, and I, and I could tell you that we're on our way. We're definitely on our way. So I'm going to... Uh, just uh, move on and ask uh, uh, Abby to go ahead and uh, pick up from there, and uh, and and then we can talk about what the Port Authority is doing. Okay. Sure. All right. So it's Abby Heavey and, and Pamela. <laughs> Pamela Lafrenier, um, and we're both with uh, the New Bedford Port Authority. Yes. Um, we'd like to. Be, uh, I am the general counsel and fisheries director for the New Bedford Port Authority, and. Uh, I'm the Director of Development for the New Bedford Port Authority. And so we'd like to begin uh, by, uh, on behalf of uh, our seven-member uh, Board of Commissioners, uh, chaired by the Mayor of New Bedford, we'd like to thank all of you, in particular, the Mass CEC, uh, for hosting us this morning. And Buddy, thank you very, very much for the invitation. Um, the seven members, thank you very kindly for inviting us. Um, and so we have a slide presentation that I think is going to be provided for the television audience that uh, you can see later but uh, so by way of beginning um, the port uh, is in case you haven't heard in multiple news releases we're the number one dollar value fishing port in the United States of America and we're very very proud of that um, but that doesn't mean we don't have room uh, for any and all newcomers um, we're, we're very happy uh, to uh, see the arrival of a new form of business and that's the uh, burgeoning uh, arrival of offshore wind. Um, we have 1,600 linear feet of bulkhead in the Port of New Bedford, and we were very happy uh, to see the arrival of the beautiful facility um, of the Marine um, CEC uh, arrive, Clean Energy Center arrived because that's, that's it, the, the facility that we're sitting in this morning is just absolutely beautiful. Um, Earlier um, this year, um, hopefully you, our viewing audience saw that as well, that uh, we had a study uh, conducted and um, economic figures were arrived at that the economic value of the Port of New Bedford is $11.1 billion. Yes, you heard that right, $11.1 billion. Our business revenue is $3.8 billion. The direct jobs, 6,808. Direct wages, $362 million. Annually, there are expenditures of $500,000 annual expenditures per fishing vessel in the New Bedford Harbor. Those break down, on average, um, are 27% for haul out painting, Electronics account for approximately 2%. Engine repairs, about 19%. 9% is for gear and factory equipment. We have 27% on insurance, 10% on fuel. But this doesn't mean that we can rest on our laurels and just have it be fishing 
that is all that we do. We must stay resilient. Um, and I'm certain that when tourists come to New Bedford, they see the slogan that New Bedford lit the world. Well, it's going to light the world again, just in a different way. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, scenes of old New Bedford will show that uh, we used to do cargo handling, blacksmiths, I don't think there are a lot of those around anymore, um, sail making, shipbuilding, cordage, manufacturing, iron mongering, cooperage, and pump and block making. Um, we've changed a lot since then. Um, the port now um, is made up uh, mostly of Abbey. <laughs> Uh, fishermen, lumpers, cutters, wholesalers, processors, fabricators, shipyards, fuel suppliers, ice houses, um, welders, truckers, warehouse workers, and then, you know, emerging data scientists, marine biologists, chefs, white st uh, wait staff, medical device manufacturers, um, IoT, computer scientists, and etc. And it kind of shows the example of all of the shoreside businesses that support commercial fishing and can also support offshore wind and why we think that we are a great port for operations and maintenance um, support. So there is great diversity and versatility in the commercial fishing. fishing. Um, for the 17th, 18th year, 18th. the 18th year, we have been um, <coughs> crowned the number one dollar value fishing port in the United States of America. It's been based on scallops, landings, ground fish, pelagics, offshore and inshore lobster, surf clams, quahogs, Atlantic red crab, herring, mackerel, conch, slime eel, and we are the global processing hub in the U.S. This diversity and versatility also has water dependent activities. Um, we do break bulk head, uh, bulk break bulk cargo, burgeoning recreational, and we're a burgeoning recreational destination. There were 26 cruise ships that were scheduled in 2017. We are a, an emerging recreational boating destination because if you've ever visited Pope's Island Marina, um, you can certainly account for that. Um, we are an all-purpose marine services industry. We have marine research leader. Um, we are a marine research leader. We have the fast ferry that goes to both Nantucket and uh, Martha's Vineyard and it makes numerous trips throughout the day um, and there's also a ferry service to Cuddyhunk and as where we are now sitting we also have the claim to fame to being the future center for offshore wind staging. We see ourselves as being the place where there is indeed an offshore wind opportunity. There, we are projecting that the industry will gener generate 20 gigawatts of power by 2030. Isn't that the projection, Bruce? Yeah. That's the projection? Right. Okay. Yeah. The projection is also that the industry is going to create $70 billion in business opportunity. Um, there, is, there are already several leased areas. Um, that Massachusetts has already uh, leased out wind lease areas in off the coast of Massachusetts that have uh, wind lease areas that have been calls made and companies have answered that call. There are soon to be lease areas off of New York and New Jersey. The New Bedford Port Authority, as I mentioned at the onset of Abby and I speaking, is a seven-member um, board and we form uh, subcommittees dealing with everything from fisheries to personnel to um, dealing with our financials. And with um, our newest uh, commissioner, who is Jim Oliveira, uh, we created a job subcommittee. And with the creation of that, uh, subcommittee, they, they are going to, this, this subcommittee is going to be focused on Wind energy, wind energy, and uh, marine-related businesses to identify laborers that could potentially fill positions that we think will be needed. 
mass hire is going to be working with these individual laborers uh, to help assist with training uh, and with job seeking. And we are going to be uh, posting these things on our website. As jobs become available, we are going to ask employers to notify us and then we're going to put them on our website so that potential job seekers can have a place, to, a, a central warehouse where they can go look for potential employment so that everyone, every employer can know they can go there and post a job. Abby, anything else you want to tell them about? Um, yeah, we're also in the process of putting together, so, so I think our role at the Port Authority is um, the industry side of working with industry to identify <coughs> what types of laborers they're looking for, what skills they're looking for, um, and then Jim at Mass Hire is, you know, m matching those two things, but working closely um, on that. And then this summer we're going to be doing a waterfront survey. Um, to all of our kind of waterfront businesses and then like marine related businesses. Um, and one of the pieces of that survey is, you know, what jobs do you have a hard time filling? Um, will you post things on our website? Um, and basically how can we support uh, bringing laborers to you? So that was, that, that will be happening this summer. Um, and I think that's pretty much it for at least our presentation. I don't know if you have follow up on it. <laughs> well, I, 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 I love that. I love everything you guys just said because that's very important to let folk know that the Port Authority is not just packing ships. It's about putting people to work. Mm -hmm. It's about creating businesses and getting the economy uh, flowing and all that stuff. So it's very important that people in the community know that they got to get to the Career Center, get themselves registered get on the uh, uh, website of the Port Authority to see where their opportunities are going to be at and then apply. Yeah. Apply, apply, apply. This is what we have to do and of course uh, you can all also contact us and we'll help you out in any way we can to uh, get you into, into the pipeline and particularly again getting to the Career Center getting yourself registered. So like going to the library. They give you a, a membership card and all that stuff. You can use their computers and all that other stuff that they have there, including their counselors, uh, to get the right information. So uh, anyone who's not going to the Career Center is slowing up the process. Uh, because we need you to be there so that you're registered so we can begin to pick uh, from those uh, list of people that they have and refer them to the uh, uh, companies that are going to be looking for those bodies uh, very shortly. So I just wanted to emphasize the, uh, the job aspect of all this. And now we're going to switch over to another speaker from the National Community Center uh, just to give us an update on some of the activities going on there. Introduce Absolutely, yeah. Thanks, buddy, very much. Uh, my name is Bruce Carlisle. I'm the Senior Director for Offshore Wind with the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center. Um, I do uh, really want to thank uh, buddy Andre, um, uh, the city and Port of New Bedford, uh, Vineyard Wind, for uh, being here uh, this morning for, for this forum. Um, you know, buddy was uh, so articulate in, um, I think, you know, explaining sort of how we got here. Um, and I think uh, it's taken, um, you know, a lot of folks at a lot of different levels uh, really leaning in. And um, I really, again, uh, you know, got to take my hat off to, to Buddy for, um, you know, keeping uh, both the Clean Energy Center, but the city and, and other stakeholder and partners um, kind of eyes on the ball on this. Um, you know, a lot of balls in the air and we can't let any of them drop. Um, anyway, so I thought maybe what I could do is um, explain a little bit more about Mass CEC, what our role is, um, and then get a little bit into uh, some of the workforce stuff, um, and then you know sort of see if there's any any, any questions or, or or the extend the dialogue a little bit more. Um, our role uh, at the Clean Energy Center in the offshore wind um, division uh, is pretty simple. Uh, we are here to uh, support and advance the responsible development of offshore wind uh, for Massachusetts. Uh, but also for the region and really also for the U.S. Um, this is uh, a, a new industry for us, um, but it also represents uh, offshore wind, um, essentially a, a homegrown uh, renewable energy resource uh, right off our coast. Uh, we don't need to go um, you know, too far afield, and uh, we can certainly use uh, our, our um, you know, uh, natural resources, uh, carbon-free uh, renewable energy. Um, We've been working uh, on offshore wind uh, since the inception of the Clean Energy Center. Um, and uh, as uh, folks have uh, discussed uh, uh, a little bit this morning, um, you know, for the last uh, 10 years or more, uh, we've been really sort of focused on, on, on pre-market uh, activities. 
Um, so we uh, do a lot of work to identify, you know, risks, challenges, and barriers, uh, and we make investments and work with uh, partners uh, to try to minimize uh, those risks and address those. Uh, so we've done things like invested in marine wildlife uh, studies. Uh, so we know offshore where we're talking about that there were, uh, you know, data gaps around the presence uh, distribution of um, marine mammals, critically endangered uh, species, uh, marine birds. Uh, we've also looked at at, um, you know, transmission, Buddy was talking about uh, transmission a little bit. Yeah, we can, um, uh, you know, b build the, the turbines and the ener genera energy generating facilities, but you need to actually uh, tie that in into the grid uh, where the load is. Um, so we've invested in transmission studies, we've invested in met ocean data uh, to really understand what the resource is and to provide a test bed uh, for the offshore wind developers and companies to uh, essentially validate um, their wind models and, and their whole uh, business strategy strategies. Um, you know, uh, that our focus uh, sort of pivoted and expanded uh, in 2016 uh, when the legislature passed and the governor signed the uh, energy diversity bill. Uh, which required uh, in Massachusetts uh, that the state and the electric distribution companies uh, procure uh, 1,600 megawatts of offshore wind. Um, and that really was a pivotal moment, um, I think, for the, for the industry in the U.S. Um, you know, we had been working really hard uh, and long uh, with our partners at the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management on the federal side. Uh, the federal government's responsible for the, the, the siting and the, and the leasing and the, and the planning. Um, and we did, as, as um, uh, um, you know, the, the port um, uh, indicated, you know, we, we do have seven uh, lease areas uh, with four uh, highly qualified and very capable developers. Um, but the, really the missing ingredient was uh, the power purchase agreement, it's the offtake. Um, and with the energy bill, uh, that path became much clearer uh, for Massachusetts and really opened the door. Um, it led to our first uh, competitive procurement uh, in which uh, Vineyard Wind uh, successfully um, won the first um, contract uh, uh, in the Commonwealth uh, with uh, a project, 800 megawatt project, um, and a levelized cost that uh, really no one uh, in the industry uh, or beyond uh, expected. Um, so we are um, hard at work now uh, supporting Vineyard Wind, uh, but also um, working more broadly on uh, what we call sector development. So uh, working on the ports and infrastructure piece of, of things, um, we've invested um, uh, significant capital in the New Bedford Marine Commerce Terminal, which is the only special built uh, facility in the U.S. Uh, for uh, offshore wind. Uh, we look forward to uh, hosting Vineyard Wind when they come uh, in um, 2020 and, and take over the terminal and begin staging the uh, components uh, of their um, uh, wind turbine generators uh, and uh, we start um, uh, uh, down the path to um, uh, deploying the, uh, the, the um, projects offshore. Uh, so in addition to ports and infrastructure, doing a lot of work in supply chain, supply chain development, um, uh, making the connections between folks already in the industry and local businesses, uh, service and suppliers, many of which uh, are here supporting our, our commercial fishing and other industries. Uh, so making those connections, growing those partnerships, uh, and hopefully leading to uh, uh, contracts and, and, and joint business ventures. Uh, and then also really working on the, the workforce, and that's kind of what our, our conversation is uh, primarily focused on today. Um, we recognize, as Buddy indicated, that um, this isn't going to happen uh, on its own. Um, it, it, it will, but it, it, you know, to, to get us to the point where we need to be, um, you know, we're going to need to make some investments. Uh, we're going to need to do some additional training. We're going to have to make the connections uh, that are going to get um, folks uh, in uh, sort of related industries or labor, um, folks who um, may not have, uh, as Buddy, uh, you know, focuses on. Uh, the, the best access to opportunity uh, and, and make those connections. Um, so uh, uh, at the Clean Energy Center, um, you know, we've made some um, uh, grants available uh, this year uh, in 2019. Uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, we were here in the, um, in the Commerce Terminal uh, announcing uh, nearly three quarters of a million dollars uh, in workforce training and development grants. Um, uh, and we were so pleased to have Vineyard Wind uh, announce a, a cost share uh, supporting uh, the Commonwealth and all of our partners uh, on this really important endeavor. 
Uh, those investments you know, are going to run a spectrum. Um, one of the first things we need to do is to get the folks who are going to be working in this industry uh, the right safety and technical training. Um, so you could be uh, an expert welder, you could be an uh, 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 you know a high voltage uh, uh, electrician joiner, uh, but you're going to need to be able to get on a vessel, uh, make your way offshore, uh, connect up to a transition piece, uh, get yourself safely from the vessel uh, onto uh, the transition piece so that you're going to be able to uh, not only construct but operate and maintain uh, this energy uh, infrastructure. So um, the industry standard really uh, is coming from Europe uh, and, and, and uh, more sort of international. Uh, we obviously uh, here in the U.S. don't have a mature uh, offshore wind workforce. Um, so we are taking the Global Wind Organization, uh, which is essentially the gold standard um, for the industry, uh, and starting this up here. So uh, Buddy mentioned earlier Mass Maritime Academy. Uh, so they are going to uh, be ready to go. Um, at the end of this summer, uh, we've invested in a uh, crew transfer uh, training facility, uh, and we've invested in a uh, full uh, GWO uh, safety program at Mass Maritime. Uh, we also have uh, partners uh, both here in New Bedford uh, and in uh, uh, the South Coast here um, in the form of uh, Bristol Community College, uh, who also will be doing uh, some safety training, but also expanding and, and doing a lot of work on the, on the technical side and making the connections from the folks at the vocational up through the community college uh, onto uh, the uh, jobs and vocations uh, with our um, you know, suppliers and, and tier one, two, and three uh, and businesses. Uh, so we've also done um, some other investments with uh, Cape Cod Community College, um, uh, we adult continuing education uh, in Martha's Vineyard, uh, really looking across a spectrum of, um, you know, uh, recognizing the opportunities and, and building the programs uh, to uh, both train people, uh, provide scholarships for uh, the trades uh, to be able to actually get the training uh, and to create the pipeline where we're educating and, and telling folks about the career opportunities uh, in offshore wind. Vineyard Wind has been an excellent partner on this um, and uh, I look forward to uh, hearing, hearing more what, what Jen has to say. Um, the last thing I'll just say on this is that um, you know, we look forward uh, to continuing uh, to, to be investing in this. Uh, the Commonwealth and the Clean Energy Center uh, feels this is an important uh, area for investment. Um, so in, you know, uh, later in 2019 and into 2020, um, I expect to see other opportunities where we're, you know, supporting the access to opportunity uh, type of um, initiatives, um, you know, making better connections between the industry uh, and the workforce uh, and continuing on um, uh, on that path. So I guess I just leave it right there, buddy, and I don't know if you have any additional questions and um, maybe, maybe pass it over to Jen. Yeah. Uh, All right. Let me just uh, say, say thank you for that. I, I think, ladies and gentlemen in the audience, if you heard everything both the Port Authority is talking about and the Masculine Energy Center is talking about, they're saying opportunity is galore. That means there's going to be a lot of opportunity. You have to be prepared. So I emphasize again, going, getting into the career center, getting yourself prepared. And if you don't have a GED or a high school diploma, that is another area that we're, we're, we're really emphasizing. Uh, the uh, Martha's Vineyard is going to be doing a lot of that with their adult education program, uh, with the grant that they got. So we want to see that also happen here, and we're emphasizing that to folk. Don't let that hold you back. Get in contact with us. Let us know what you need, and we'll help you out. Um, so that, that was fantastic. You really laid out a lot of good stuff because yeah, we're trying to educate the community. I uh, want to now introduce uh, uh, Jen Cullen from Vineyard Wind and, and thank her for being here and thank her for the almost uh, about six months, eight months, and nine months of uh, communications and engagement uh, with her and, and Liz and others from Vineyard Wind and Eric. And uh, we have appreciated having that opportunity to be able to have that uh, um, our communications and engagement. But uh, now we're ready to go. So we want to hear where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Hi, thanks, buddy. Um, I'm Jen Cullen with Vineyard Wind, and um, I'm heading up a lot of our workforce development initiatives. Um, as everyone has said this morning, we are getting very close to starting construction on our project. We were selected as the Massachusetts um, 
award winner of the first bid. So we will be w building a one or an 800 megawatt project offshore here. Um, will be the first commercial scale offshore wind project in the United States. And um, with that great opportunity comes a lot of responsibility. Um, we're headquartered here in New Bedford. Um, we're really happy to be a part of this community, and we understand that you know there's a lot of work that we are doing here to ensure that the opportunities that are coming with this industry are going to be available to people within the southeastern Massachusetts community. Um, We've been doing that in a lot of different ways, and as we're getting closer to construction, we're identifying our major contractors that we're gonna be working with. Um, so we have identified about half of those major contractors um, and have announced them publicly thus far. Um, you know, two of the major packages that were announced recently, um, we have a contract to be working with, or commitment to be working with MHI Vestas to supply our turbines. Um, and we have a recent announcement working with a company called Prismian to supply the export cable that will bring the power from the wind farm to shore. Um, and so as we are working with those contractors, we're getting a lot of a, a better sense of what the jobs are actually going to entail. Um, and that's something that we're working really closely with them on to understand, you know, we know that we're gonna need a strong workforce, but what exact jobs are gonna be needed to get this thing built? Um, what are the skills required for the people um, to be qualified for those jobs? And what kinds of certifications are they going to need? Um, and as Bruce talked about, we're working really closely with CEC um, and the educational and academic institutions here in the state to ensure that those safety certification programs and any other certification training programs are available. Um, one of the ways that we are bringing new people into the industry is by working with CEC on their internship program. And so we actually have two of our interns here today and um, I'd like to introduce them and have them just say a couple words about why they're working with Vineyard Wind and, and their interest in offshore wind. Um, we have Martha Diesman and she's a student at University of Delaware, which has, you know, as an institution, UDEL has been really involved in offshore wind for almost 20 years now. Um, and Andy Painton, who is a student at Mass Maritime. And, um, you know, as we were talking about, Mass Maritime is one of the um, academic institutions that we're working closely with on a lot of things, um, especially setting up that GWO safety training. So, Martha? Um, hi, I'm Martha. I, um, oh. I graduated last May from University of Delaware with a degree in environmental studies and economics. Um, I got the opportunity to go to the offshore wind uh, conference last week, and I'm excited to learn more about the project as it's developing. So I'm Andy, I'm graduating tomorrow from Mass Maritime with a degree in Marine Safety and Environmental Protection. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I wanted to contribute to a project that was working towards cleaner energy because this should be the future of where we're working towards, so I was hoping to help with Vineyard Wind on that. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And these guys are just two of um, five interns that we actually have this summer. So last year we had one intern through Mass CEC and she ended up coming on full time with Vineyard Wind. And um, this year we have five interns, three based at our headquarters here in New Bedford and two up in our Boston office, um, which is really exciting. Um, we also, as Bruce mentioned, we have a commitment of $2 million in a Windward Workforce Fund. And so that is a fund that we have allocated to go directly towards assisting with the training and the development of the workforce that we will need for our project. Um, and so, you know, we did that initial award with Mass CEC to set up those safety um, training programs and other um, educational training programs. And we're gonna be working with the Mass CEC on um, on scholarships to get people into those programs and the pipeline and you know other needs that the workforce has here in the state to be ready for um, not just our project but beyond our project. Um, another thing that we are doing working with Port of New Bedford and Mass CEC and others in the community here is we are hosting Meet the Buyer events and so as I said we've got um, some of our major contractors that are being announced and we're anticipating more will be announced um, in the next few weeks. And what we're working to do is really align those major contractors with building relationships with local businesses here. So New Bedford and Southeastern Massachusetts has a strong maritime culture, a lot of businesses that have been feeding into that industry for a long time. And a lot of those businesses have services and resources that we will need for the offshore wind work that we're doing. Um, 
And so we are planning to host events with our major, con you know, our tier one contractors, so MHI Vestas, Prismian, and others to um, really introduce them to what resources can be available here in New Bedford and um, build those local business connections. We also have some of the um, work that's going into the development of the site so that we've already started with these Meet the Buyer events. So we have survey vessels that are going offshore. Um, we've had two in the last few weeks and we have one that is going to be um, here next week and then going off to do geotechnical survey work in our lease area um, mid-week. And so we have held two and we'll be hosting a third um, Meet the Buyer events where we are inviting local businesses that can supply resources to our survey vessels to come and meet with them. Um, these vessels need pretty basic services, but they're services that can be filled by companies here locally. Um, and so we'll be holding our third Meet the Buyer event on Wednesday this week here at the Mass EC um, uh, Commerce Terminal and we're inviting local businesses to come and meet with the survey company and the vessel owners um, and if they have services and resources that the company will need um, for the vessel as they go out to sea then um, that could be a great relationship to start building as we're moving toward that work um, so we're doing a lot to try to connect with the community and ensure that um, you know the the more that we're learning about what the businesses and what our major contractors will need in terms of workforce and local resources that we as a developer have a responsibility and we're working hard to follow through on that to make sure that we're building those connections um, and providing that opportunity here as locally as we can. Um, so if there's other questions, I'm sure we've got lots to talk about. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, thank you, Jen. Uh, uh, you know, I think, you know, when um, when we all, when we look at, if everybody understands what we're talking about and, and they can see that the, uh, these jobs are here, they're coming, uh, but what you got to do to get to get to jobs is, is very important for the people in, in the community to understand. The, the conference in Boston was, was, uh, was, was wonderful. Uh, and you know, having been to a few of them, they, you know, they're almost all alike, so, 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 so to speak. But this one was kind of special. And the reason why it was special for me is because we were able to bring two individuals with us. Uh, fortunately, I was able to get into the, uh, the main conference and Masculine Energy Center had its forum uh, uh, in the afternoon on Tuesday and we were part of that, that aspect as well. And we registered about four individuals from the community that, that also went. Uh, the two individuals uh, who are college to, uh, university graduates uh, uh, came for the Masculine Energy Center. On Monday while I was there, I asked Adam uh, Minkley, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, uh, if I could bring these two individuals that were coming in the afternoon on Tuesday into the exhibit room to, of the regular conference. And he didn't see any reason why not. I said they were you know, college students that just graduated and all that. We want them to see what, what it looks like and the hands-on stuff. And he said yes, and uh, they got a, a tag. They had to get registered and got a tag, and they were allowed in. And it was really a, 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 a fantastic part to watch these young men walk around and see and having people talk to them and you know, uh, explain to them what's going on and all that. And one particular person that we met was uh, Paula Garcia, who's with the um, Concerned Scientists. She did a blog uh, on the uh, conference and, and it included us and with a picture of the individuals that uh, attended the conference uh, with us. Uh, the gentlemen, uh, both of them, Brandon uh, Burke and uh, Devon uh, Center, they both live here in the South End. They're both from the community. Uh, Brandon graduated from the University of Hartford uh, with a degree in sound audio engineering and uh, Devon graduated from Bridgewater State in a degree in uh, health and fitness and he uh, uh, Brandon uh, Devon rather is also running our basketball program and health program at the uh, park here uh, uh, for the summer and being in that room made a big difference and there it was with them yesterday and they were both saying man you don't know what you did to us uh brandon already has a uh, interview in pocasset uh with a company out of pocasset uh the it's just mushroom for both of these guys in regards to the information and people that they make contact with now while we were there at the conference of course i go around and grab a whole bunch of junk and stuff but these are all the different con contractors that we talked to 
And one particular company guy that we talked, a guy, gentleman by the name of Dylan, uh, who's with uh, the Vespa, is it? And uh, they're supposed to be getting a contract here. They're going to be doing it. And he told these guys they're looking for 40 people to hire. So their eyes went up and everybody went into conversations with, with the, they went into with these two guys. And what they've already done is talk to their peers. And so I've got two other guys calling me wanting to know, you know how come they didn't know about this and all that kind of stuff. Well, I didn't tell you because I didn't know that you was interested. But they've already done what I've asked them to do, become recruiters. You know, to get out there and do the same thing. We have two individuals who are also now part of the uh, apprenticeship program with the Pile Drivers Union out of Boston. Uh, Jerry Pinto, who's already been working on the uh, uh, in the Boston Harbor, and uh, Joe Welch. I'm not, exactly, I'm not exactly sure where he's working at yet, but these are two individuals also from New Bedford, one from the west end of the city, the other one from the south end. And the three individuals I'm talking about live right across the street here right within blocks away from each other and from, from this particular facility. So it's a big feather in the, in the city's cap, and I know the mayor is very tickled about knowing that these guys and they're from the community and they're in the pipeline. And this is what we got to do more of. And so this, uh, uh, this event today is important in getting the word out, letting folks know that they can do it too, and all they're going to need to do is follow up with us, contact our office, uh, send us uh, a, an email with your resumes, uh, get into the Career Center, uh, get a contact with the Port Authority, and uh, uh, go online and see what the Mass Clean Energy Center has to offer, as well as Vineyard Wind. Now, with that, if we have any questions, any other discussion we want, want to talk with, we can do that. If not, then we'll just say uh, thank you to the listening audience in, in the, uh, in the uh, living rooms of New Bedford uh, for of, uh, listening to what we have to say. But more importantly, do something. Get up and go to the Career Center, get your resumes together, contact me, uh, uh, get involved with the Port Authority so that we can know who you are and what we need to do to get you into the pipeline and, uh, and figure out what, what the next steps are. Any other comments? I I would just want to encourage, um, I know you're encouraging people to go to the Career Center, but I'd also encourage especially the young people to um, register themselves as Mass CEC potential interns, because I know that's where we've gotten several of our interns, and um, we're encouraging, as our major contractors are setting up shop here in Massachusetts, we're encouraging them to take on interns as well. Um, so, you know, the, the bigger that database grows, especially with young people from southeastern Massachusetts, the more local interns will have to choose from. That's a very good point, very good point in regards to getting more, more young folks. Uh, we also could also talk more to the kids in the high school, both the high school and, and the vocationals. We're doing that. We're trying to set up some uh, sessions in the fall at the Voc as well as New Bedford High. I do have one big thing that I want to talk about, and, and, that, and that's in regards to all of us again. Um, when I talked about that exhibit room, uh, we would like to see here in New Bedford a, a not a conference conference, but an exhibit um, trade show, uh, one of those kinds of things that, that has been done, like the vocational has done quite often, the trade shows. But bring in all, all, everybody that was in Boston here, setting up their booths and inviting, opening up the doors, inviting the community to visit each one of these uh, uh, stations and see, because uh, one particular one, I can't remember the name off, off the top of my head, but it had all the safety equipment. How, if you're going to be out there, if you're going to fall off the ship or off, off a ladder, you got to have the right kind of gear on, and all that stuff is there. All the uh, the, the uh, uh, equipment that's used for, for climbing, uh, coming down, lifting things, all that stuff. That is so important for people to see for themselves and put their hands on and know, wow, I'm going to go three feet of water, 100 feet up in the air, it's cold, it's windy, it's rainy. Uh, you know, it's, this is tough work, and I can tell you that the gentleman that's working at the Boston Harbor saw him yesterday, dirty and all that. It's tough. It's hard, buddy. He didn't think it was going to be that hard. Yeah, and, he's, and he's a worker. He's been on the waterfront most of his life. He's only, what, 26 years old. He's a welder. But this stuff that he's doing in Boston is the real deal, okay? <laughs> Not that what's going on in, in uh, on the waterfront that he was doing wasn't hard, but this is hard. But just think when you transfer from that into the water. 
okay, and uh, people understanding how that's going to work. So it's really, this is not going to be easy work, folks. It's going to be hard work, but it's a career that you'll be able to take care of your families, have a, have a, have a good life, have a home, send your kids to college, and, and, and be comfortable. But I, I just one other thing I'd like to uh, raise, Oops. Excuse us. Um, and that's uh, you know, sort of um, kind of stay tuned and stay in touch uh, because you know as we uh, start to grow this ecosystem out. Um, you know, we're going to be developing things like, you know, Offshore Wind 101 and running, you know, a day long or a couple hour long opportunity for people in the community and people who aren't really part of this but want to find out more uh, those opportunities. Uh, so there's a lot of sort of um, pieces of that that are going to really start to gel up and grow. Um, and whether, you know, it's, uh, you know, not far or right here in the neck of the woods, um, continuing to encourage people to sort of stay in the loop. Uh, a lot of those uh, opportunities will be available, you know, off our website, off the uh, city or the ports, off Vineyard Winds, and I'm sure, uh, you know, Buddy's got a very active uh, lift serve and, and network. You know, we'll use the, the Mass Hire team. Uh, we'll use our partners at, you know, Mass Maritime, at Bristol Community, Cape Cod Community, at ACE uh, MV. But just really, um, um, you know, sort of a two-way street, right? We, we want to make those opportunities out there, but you guys in the community, you need to um, take advantage of it. Okay, and in closing? Yeah. You have something? No, no, no. no. Uh, in closing, I just want to uh, close out by saying that um, I want to dedicate this particular uh, forum this morning uh, to Miss uh, Mini Center, uh, who is a, um, an elderly person who just passed in our community, and I... Uh, I'm sitting here because of women like her, who uh, at 23, 24 years old, when I first came back from Vietnam and came back to the community, she was one of the uh, many women who uh, got me involved, educated me, uh, trained me, and stood on top of me to make sure I continued to do the work that I was trained to do. And uh, 40 years later, I'm still doing it, and I want to just dedicate this to her and her family because of uh, this is what she wanted to happen. And her grandson is Devon Center, who is one of the boys that, that went up. And so I'm very proud that, uh, she, well, I'm already doing it, many. <laughs> okay? So I just wanted to close with that. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, please get in contact with us. Let us know uh, what your interest may be. Uh, our email address is obvdcbr, and we're going to have it on the screen for you uh, so that you can send us your resume. Uh, let us know what you're trying to do, what we, what, how we can help. Uh, sky's the limit. This is the city that lived the world back in the 1800s with whale oil. Now we're going to do it with renewable energy. Go New Bedford, Willing City. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everybody for participating. Know that you can watch any of New Bedford Cable Network shows anytime, anywhere on all of your mobile devices? How, you may ask? Just log on to nbcablenetwork.com and bam! You have all three channels at your fingertips. Public, educational, and government access. Here, you can view our program schedules, watch our channel's live broadcasts, or search for a particular program in our vast library of shows. Last year alone, New Bedford Cable Network produced over 500 shows, and nearly all of them are available online at nbcablenetwork.com. Not only can you stay up to date with what's happening in your local government and schools, but also dive into some of New Bedford Cable Network's original award-winning programs. So check us out at nbcablenetwork.com. What? <laughs>